Well, this is my first National League coaching in New Zealand. Um, definitely a big learning experience for me. Um, I've learned the little details count in these sort of games. It's a lot different to coaching in the community leagues, in the draft leagues and those sort of things. And I think this one's a massive learning curve for me. Um, I think the big thing we're looking forward for later is the derby against the surge. We'd have to come out firing. We know they're a team that can come out and bring a lot, a lot of heat when they want to. So we're just going to focus on those little things. Well, the last two games we played, Surge was both 10-5 to us. So last week and then mm. yesterday. Um, so yeah, no, I think we'll stick with something similar to what we're doing. Um, a few little tweaks I think the boys have spoken about and myself. So we'll take a slightly new game plan into the, tomorrow's game. But definitely the same intensity and same approach. Well, Mario, uh, you're playing in the third and fourth game. Probably not the one you wanted to play. You probably wanted to be in the final. But uh, important for your side to, to finish this tournament off with a win. Oh, definitely. Uh, we had a very good games and we lost three, three games in a row by one goal. So we are so excited for to, uh, to be able to play for the third place. And the boys are so excited as well. So, yeah, we are, are ready for that. You've had... Uh, quite high scoring games against Waikato in this tournament uh, and particularly in the last few minutes we see a flurry of goals coming late is that are we expecting sort of the same thing today as well oh definitely and there's the guys say our game is, is always you know exciting we like to use it a fifth man if we are not winning so for sure we are ready to use a fifth man again and yeah it will be it will be fun you've got one of the uh, younger teams at this tournament as well a lot of youth coming through is that the way you've liked to see up this team sort of thinking further ahead and, and maybe the, the tournament's coming next year, the year after, etc. Oh, for sure. So we we have only three players over 21. So all the, the rest of the team is under 20. So it's the, my starting lineup. I have three under 18. So, yeah, this is the, what I like to do is help the players to develop their skills and be ready to play and re represent New Zealand in the next three, four years. All right, well, good luck today. Uh, all the very best, and uh, yeah, good luck for the uh, third and fourth place playoff. Oh, thank you very much. And aren't we blessed to have such depth in coaching and futsal here in New Zealand? Wesley Hendricks there for the Waikato Rapids and Mario Ramos for the Bay of Plenty Search. Well, joining us in commentary, bringing you all the expert comments, is Mark Matsis. Mark, you've been around the sport a long time. Two emerging teams, two teams that probably realised they weren't good enough for this final, but both desperate to get themselves on the podium. Kia ora Mark, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a development side for both of these teams, as I mentioned earlier today. I think uh, the two teams, if we look at the starting lineups now for the surge, it's Kemplin and Gold, McLeod, Vava, Olsen and Ramos rounding out the starting five. And for the Rapids, JP Page gets the nod and goal. Casey Sharplin, Ethan Martin, two experienced players in the starting five. And alongside the Ericsson brothers, Max and Tyler, it's going to be an exciting start. Yeah, and we talk about individuals winning games, but it's a squad that wins a championship. Both teams have great depth off the bench. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for uh, Vieira Gale, for uh, the Surge, is one to watch for me as well. And, I mean, when you look at the substitutions for the Rapids, Kareem Osman, a lot of experience there. Yeah, yeah look, this is, futsal's very similar. There's a lot of similarities between basketball. I, I, people that have watched water polo will all understand, expect the unexpected. But also with ice hockey, because you will see constant substitutions. At times it might be one player, sometimes it might be a complete line of players. Um, as again, just confirming those starting lineups there, Mario Ramos, the head coach, uh, Vinny, as Avedo, their assistant coach. Um, how are you expecting the coaches to use their bench? Yeah, great question. Mark. I, one of the ways I like to think of futsal is almost like a chess game. Each time a, a team makes one substitution, that might force you into a substitution as well. So you're just trying to counteract. And so if they bring on a different style of player, you need to bring on a different type of player to maybe match it. So it will be the Waikato Rapids with that very good starting lineup, they will be starting in the red and the white, the colours as I like to allude to, the colours of Southampton up against the blue and black of the Bay of Plenty side, closer to Inter Milan if I can use those footballing terms. But we are underway, bronze medal up for grabs, forward, Super League, third and fourth game, and opportunity for both teams just to get a bit of a feel for how their opponents will look to try and set up. Good start here coming from Waikato side looking to get back. Big danger player, too. Big man 
for the Bay of Plenty, Andrew Olsen. He's a player that just brings a lot of bulk. First shot, but blocked. And now another nice little left foot shot opportunity for the keeper, JP Page, just to get his eye in. No, I think uh, Olsen, he scored some absolute screamers this weekend, in fact. He's got a powerful shot on him. He could just find the back of the net somehow. So nice movement here. Nice attention of the ball from the Waikato side. Happy to go left and right. Coming down this left-hand side. Good communication between the teams as well. So the Ericsson brothers, the 10 and the 18. Now opportunity opened up for Vava. Just a little bit too long on the pass. Just a little bit too much weight. But great intent, great attacking attempt from both sides early. That's what we talked about in, in the pre-match. Those passing channels that uh, this surge side are able to find. And that one doesn't quite not on the mark. Chance here. Good play back underway. Right, you come up this side. Opportunity here. Another one that's open on that far side. Boy, that is good play from the Waikato side early. Both the Ericsson, Maxwell and Tyler creating opportunities, drawing that defence across to the left-hand side, which of course then opens up the right, and they exploited that space. He's a quality player, Ethan Martin there. Shot off target. He was actually uh, the player of the tournament a couple of years ago and has since made his debut for the New Zealand side. Now chance here, Olsen. No, he's going to come back. Again, Ericsson looks to do a little poke. Vava will bring it back away, acting in that fix-it role. Now Olsen, big player, physical, but taken off him. Good piece of play coming from Ethan Martin, the captain. Wanting to set the standard early. Follow me. That's the message. Yes, uh, again, a great tournament over in the final against uh, the Solomon Islands. Ethan Martin, good to see him back playing futsal. So, opportunity. The kick in, comes back across. And one touch, one hit from Casey Sharplin. Long throw, don't, under, don't underestimate too just how strategic those throw outs from the keeper are. And it's a big part of their game, it's a big part of the skill set. So, it's surprisingly, just how heavy a futsal ball is. I think that's always going to be the target of the surge when Olsen is on the court. Is that long ball to him? See if he can bring that one down and have runners come off him. So he's a quality player, this young man, Osman. My apologies. Number six there is Ryan McLeod. McLeod, okay. great challenge. He picks it up, great challenge. Has to go himself. Hasn't got any support. The support arrives, but just a little bit too late. Good hustle coming from Tyler Erickson in defence. Trying to right the wrong. Try and go long here. So. Okay. Quality Casey Sharplin. Very much acting. Well, to try and thread the needle, can't find it. Keeper comes out. Four by a penny, Nate Chaplin. Kemplin. Ooh, and just to go down the other end, oh, and superb piece of defence, desperate stuff from Ethan Martin, but that's what we talk about when it comes to futsal, so expect the unexpected, all the pressure, all the play coming from the Waikato Rabbids, and then almost a mercurial moment of genius from the big man, Andrew Olsen. It was brave play there from JP Page as well, just put his body on the line there and... Uh, I think he did enough, and Martin came and cleaned up the scraps. Now, shot comes Ramos. Oh, you've got to keep an eye on this young man. The man with the Brazilian influence. He's uh, gone from strength to strength. He's a very young player. He debuted about maybe three or four years ago now in this National League. Yeah, when he gets himself more involved, they just look a more dangerous side too. He's often acting in that fix-it role sometimes, and you almost prefer to see him pressing a little bit further forward. So I hope you are enjoying coverage here, finals day of the Ford Futsal Super League. The Battle of the Kaimais, from the Bay of Plenty in the blue, and Waikato in the white. Another really good piece of skill being shown again by McLeod. Finds Olsen, 
opens it back up to Vava. Vava looks to try and thread the needle, but just too much weight on the pass. You still just feel now that perhaps Bay of Plenty Surge are just starting to settle in. I think it's definitely those first few minutes in a game like this where you want to start strong, but you also don't want to give away too much. It's, it's such a dangerous thing in futsal compared to a football game. You take a shot, you miss the target, you put your head down, and before you know it, the ball's up the yeah. top and they're going again. Yeah, a lot of work done in that transitional play. Yeah. It is a big moment, but also a real area of frustration if your team just falls asleep for a minute. We expect to see changes being made as Vava looks to go up that left side. Finds Olsen, but the ball is out. Got to say, great officiating. Now two, three referees today are Ben Norman, Sean Lau, and Jake Brunton. Refereeing across the tournament's been fantastic, been very consistent. Now, chance here for Baba looks to try and come back in. Trying to target is Olsen. But scrambling back. Now the big long ball. Opportunity here. Can they thread the needle? No, they can't. Again, it's Ramos just making a nuisance of himself at the back there. Got in the way. Nervy start, I think, from both sides. No real opportunities other than Olsen's chance so far. Shooting lanes aren't really opening at the moment. I think they've got to do a bit more work to find those, you know, rotate around and create that space at the moment. Yeah, a little bit more patient. Yep, chance here. Good press defence coming up from the Waikato Surge. Now the big long ball through. A little bit wishful thinking. But just maybe sending a bit of a message. The Waikato side that we will hit you from anywhere. Bit of control. Keep it, find it. Good defence again, though. Yeah, interesting just to note that Bay of Plenty at the moment not playing any sort of high press type defence. Yeah, they're happy to sit in their own half, which is <coughs> it's a tactical play in the sense that. You, you set yourself up, you know exactly what's coming through rather than pressing high. The high press comes more when you need to chase a game. Or it can be a tactic that some sides use as well. So I love a little full throat. It eludes everybody. So Andrew just coming off the bench now, so he will be replaced in number 11. So number 7 for Bay of 20 is Aaron Carter. Where we might see a bit of a change in kind of tactics from the surge. As with Olsen going off, they might go into a bit more of a four rotation. I'll just get you to explain that definition four rotation. Yeah, so I mean, when you play with a man up top in that pivot role, you tend to rotate with the three at the back and keep that person up top. So he's acting in that pivot role. And then you and then sometimes as well you might play the fixo role at the back where that person will stay in position and the three will rotate up the top. And then when you shift to a four, zero rotation, it's pretty much just everyone rotating around on the court. Chance here now for the Bayer Plenty, good left foot shot, great shot from Keenan Howard. We talked about the speed in which they play. I just didn't hit one to watch here with the goalkeeper. He went down quite early, which is Sometimes quite a dangerous thing if you just lifted that ball, almost read it a little bit too early. It's something to watch at home with the goalkeepers. Some do like to get down really early. And, and it's interesting, isn't it, the technique that you see with the goalkeepers in futsal. There's a little bit more field hockey, a little bit more ice hockey. Like they will use their legs a lot more than what you see maybe in traditional football. Yeah, they're quite flexible compared to me, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, chance here. Opportunity comes off the line nicely, though. Does JP Page shutting that angle down? I've got to say, you've got to have a big heart, you've got to have plenty of courage to be a goalkeeper in futsal. And now the shot, somewhat ambitious, from Mario Ramos. And now what can Ramos do? Takes back down the middle, but picked off. Both sides playing quite a loose game here at the moment. Opportunity once again for Tristan Kawana. I like Kawana. Kawana is another player. When he's on, seems to make things happen. Got to keep an eye on Kawana. And a lovely little pass, just couldn't quite control it, Keenan Howard, but you just feel maybe just a little bit of a momentum shift going the way of Bay of Plenty. It's just that last touch, really, that's getting them up top. 
at the moment, doing all the work at the back, just can't get it round. Here is Ramos sitting back now in that fix it roll. Lovely to walk through, but Kawana just misread it. But the attempt was the right one. So 20 minute hearts, every time the ball goes out, there will be stoppage. And of course, we will get Mark Maxis just to talk us through the foul situation for Tees. Once we get a break in play, that's an interesting dynamic too. It's a good dynamic, it's a good rule. Yeah, so five fouls in a half. On that sixth foul, you get to take a, a spot kick, essentially. It's a bit of a distance out, but if you can whack it hard, good chance it will go in. Five fouls each team, and as we saw, really good opportunity there for Maxwell Eriksson. Picked up by Nate Camplin. Camplin looks to try and go long now. Chance here, great piece of control, just couldn't quite get on the end of it though. And that's the problem when you press high, you do open yourself up at the back. And you talk about the transition plate, that was a great example of it. Sure was going long there, and just trying to find that way to bring it down. And you're almost looking up top to hold on to the ball and have those runners come off you. We can just slide it to either side, or it creates the opportunity for you to turn your marker and get the shot away. Oh, lovely piece of play that just couldn't quite find the pass, but certainly great intent now. Both sides looking to just try and find some sort of shape here. It's been a bit loose through the first six and a half minutes. Hope you are enjoying coverage across Sky. Super League in this middle game. The battle of the time wise by Kata versus Bay of Plenty. That's Bay of Plenty in possession. Through this very talented Arang Kata. I should say that if you go through the Razine Golden Boot, Kata has five goals. Well, Maxwell Eriksson has five as well. Just a note, Mark, as well. We get to see Kareem Osman on the court for the Rapids. I did check to him before the start of the game as he was carrying a bit of a groin injury. He's, of course, a futsal white, so might be, might be a little bit too injured for him to come on. That's one thing, thing to note about football as well. When you have some of these teams that play a nice possession-based football like these two sides, the clock does down, wind down a lot faster. Yeah. Compared to a, a game where the ball might be going out a bit more with that stop clock. So we're seven minutes in and almost eight minutes. Yeah. And both, and both sides are teams who do like to build. They like to play that short passing game opportunity. Keeper manages to come out though. Good piece of keeping from Nate. Camplin again, another opportunity for the Waikato Rapids. So Casey Sharplin, pass comes across, oh, good piece of defence, I think it's Ramos again, is it? Ramos. Boy, he is everywhere, nice little through ball. Uh, control of both, so Ramos and Aaron Carter causing some havoc. Good Bay of 20. It's big minutes as well for Ramos so far. He hasn't come to the side and had a rest. And you play football, you know that it's more than a three to four minute on a stint that you'd normally do. Equally too, Casey Sharpen to the long stint. The Waikato, their captain in the number three shirt. Interesting to see that now, we're just starting to see. They have been looking to try and press a little bit higher. First foul, I believe. So you'll notice the little foul goes up. So if they do commit four more in this half, and then there is a... Well, now Baba will clear. This finds Kuana. Back to Baba. Baba happy to let it go back to his goalkeeper. You can see the high press now here from the Rapids. Not giving them any space, which is at the moment causing it, it means the surge is finding it difficult to get out. Yeah, unless you've got those guys who are just absolutely brilliant with ball at foot, that is when that press is effective. Clearly the danger is though. Aaron, get up, Aaron, get up as well. Do open at the other end of the court, but it does shut down those sides who like to play that short passing game. Auckland City will be in that men's one a little bit later. Uh, interesting watching them yesterday. Uh, and it was 
Waikato that ended up beating them and they got up the game with this press defence and sort of really frustrated Auckland. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's something that the coach might ask for a minute or two of just high press. It's not something that you could do for the whole game. Uh, so you see teams use it quite tactically at the right times and the right moments. And I think you, know, you were talking before about that momentum shift towards the surge. The Raptors then try and bring it back towards them with that press play. Good play here. Chantor almost got through too. Great piece of play there because it was Maxwell Erickson who almost acted as the decoy. And that really prevented the goalkeeper for Bay of Plenty, Nate Kaplan, to be able to see the ball. And now the shot does come. I've got to say, very impressed too with Michael Landig in defence. He brings that experience. He's just a solid football player. It's, uh, it's something that's always underrated <laughs> in all forms of football, defence. It's, it's something you've got to be able to do a bit of everything in the football game. And a great piece of keeping from Nate Kaplan. Didn't hesitate. Knew that he had to come out here. Opportunity being given by Cooper Wink. And of course, he did have Erickson open on that far side. And now, six piece play. Man back in that fix it well it is Ericsson. And did he go? Chance comes and get the foot on off. Great piece of skills, but cleared, desperately cleared away by the Bay of Plenty. Eleven minutes remaining in this first half. Nil all. Two emerging sides in the futsal. Barber. Oh, got to be careful here. Nice and dark, working it. That's good control. Players just seem to have a little bit more time, don't they? A really good example of it for the Bay of Plenty and Ryan McLeod. You can see there as well, when the goalkeeper gets that touch, that's when another good time to get that press to come on because you can't go back to your keeper again. They can only touch it once until the other side has had a go at the ball. So in that example there, they'd taken the touch and then the Rapids were able to push forward and force that error out there. They find themselves under all sorts of pressure because of it. Now big shot comes, but straight into Landy. Body on the line. And I just want to emphasize this to people watching and they might not be familiar with football. This is heavy ball. And they absolutely drill it. And so you're going to have to encourage chance here for Ericsson. Good save. Maxwell Ericsson pulled the trigger from distance. Kept it low too. They do come back now through Martin, the captain, and number seven. Looking to try and control things. Olsen's back on court. Almost a comedy of errors, but it still remains at nil all. Olsen back onto the court now for the surge as well. So you see they'll change that rotation system, use him up top. Now they look to go long. So they're bringing the changes. Because both teams have the opportunity to take a minute time out if they want in each half. I'm sure that'll be strategic at some point. Particularly if one team does start to get a lot of momentum. It's like an like amazing thing about the game from Futsal, how momentum can shift so quickly. Oh, Chance now has a big shot, looks to pull, pull it over the top too, saw so the keeper was slightly off his line. And big, big effort coming from this man here. So, Chance now at the other end. Guys haven't been on court for long. I mean, he shows just how dangerous he is in the number five shirt for the Waikato Rapids. Been very much in that pivot role. Might just seem to get closer to Olsen though, when Olsen's in position of the ball. Just sitting a little bit too off, which gives him the chance to be able to turn. Just he turns on that left foot, has the shot. Great piece of defence again. And now they come back up the other way. Again, through Tobias. And Landig. Yep. Straight at him. Single man press. Looking to try and build. Zone defense at the moment from the Bay of Plenty. Towards the sign load. Happy to switch play, move from left to right. So I'd like to see more of from the Rapids. Just holding the ball that little bit longer, being a little bit more patient, 
And of course, as I say, that shot from distance comes in. A good shot too, because tell you, watching these keepers, you think that seems to be airborne. And it seems to cope with quite well. Anything along the deck, along the court, it creates a little bit. We've got to get down lower, clearly. Now, chance again across the far side. Standing back a little bit, shot comes. Opportunity there for Aiden Robson. I think that's the other thing as well, the longer you hold on to the ball and the rotate around, the tide, the defence tyres, which then creates more opportunities. Yeah, if you don't quite have that depth or experience on the bench, that can clearly come back to burn you in that second half, particularly as they look to Glenn McIntyre's ultimate to try and go on his own. Now opportunity comes. Can they capitalise on it? They can! Superb piece of play! Brilliant goal, great teamwork on the counter-attack. That is wonderful play. Tyler Erickson involved in that. Gets it across. In fact, Elliot Cooper, I think, might have been the goal scorer. Really nicely constructed. Craig, we talk about the transition. That was an example of it. Last transition football, <laughs> it's all there. Just drives to the line, two on one, great opportunity, sends him out, a delicious ball into the centre. And just tapped away and in. Now, this is where they've got to make sure, to use a rugby terminology, they now need to exit themselves though. Do not want to suddenly... The moment of the emotion moves their concentration. Barb -bar with a little pass into Olsen, a little bit ambitious, but... We do encourage the innovation. The great thing about futsal, it's a game that does very much encourage individual, um, you know, you're allowed to be innovative, aren't you? You're allowed to bring that sort of Brazilian flair. Just got to do it in the right areas. <laughs> it's just, uh, you see sometimes when players will get caught out, in the, almost in the position where this free kick is, trying to beat a player. When you're the last person behind, you, you don't want to be making those mistakes. But up top, it's a great opportunity to get some skill moves on. Rapids, who scored the first goal. Right. Eight minutes remain. Hope you are enjoying the coverage. There's Pullman Arena. South Auckland, looking for that long ball through. Olsen, this is where he can be. Game just lays it off nicely. Probably just need a little bit more weight on that pass. Just allowing. Michael Langdegg, just a little bit more time. But that's good, that great little follow-up play. And that's where Olsen can be dangerous. You can really see the tactical shift when Olsen is on the court here. They, a lot more long balls. they will play to try and find his feet. McLeod. Uh, JP Page. The third ahead of Patrick Steele for this bronze medal. Downfall by Kato in goal. And now long ball through the middle. Nicely controlled. Opportunity here. Great footwork, great skills. This time by Henry Thompson, the man of originally out of Great Britain. Lovely little one, two. Still got the shot. Ericsson. Maybe just a bit of casual on the approach. Tyler Ericsson. Good piece of goalkeeping again from Camplin. Yes, he got out, and you can see that way that he didn't go too low too early there. He kept his body high, which allowed it when he hit a little dink over. It's a good save. So set piece, 30% of goals in for the last score from the set piece. So it is Ericsson looking to try and bring it. But manhandled nicely by Olsen. One thing we have noticed, talking to. Marvin Eakins, Mr. Putzel himself, saying that one thing we have seen here, Mark, is that the referees, to get more in line with international refereeing, are allowing for a little bit more physicality. Yeah, it, I, th I think it's a, a big part of the game as well, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a style of play that some teams will use more than others. When you're a big guy like Olsen, you want to be able to use that weight or your size to, you, to the advantage, and he did so there very well. 
also allows the game not to be caught up in pedantics because you want consistency in refereeing, don't you? And there's sometimes the physical side of the a little bit open to interpretation. I think we're also very lucky here in New Zealand. Uh, referee Chris Sinclair, who is the timekeeper today, has been to a couple of World Cups for futsal, so there's a lot of experience as well coming through to teach these youngsters who have taken it up. Yeah, pathway through, if you think, well, I don't have the athletic ability, I'm too old these days to throw myself like around like a maniac. Certainly take up the officiating side of it. Do check out your federation or your local area football federation websites and do get yourself involved. You also don't have to stand out in the rain no, when you, you uh, referee football. Yeah, you know, chance here, opportunity of Amos back on. taken from him. So it's a good combination between Ramos and Tristan Kawana. Kawana in the number 12 shirt. Howard in the 14 shirt. Or the Bay of Plenty in the blue and the black. Side. Still anybody's game with six minutes remaining in this first half. Another big long walk. But nicely picked off. Too comfortably in the middle. He's been Martin, the captain. But they have plenty. Lovely little one-two. That's good play. But no two moving forward. Come up in waves. A little bit too easy at the moment on defence for Waikato. I think I'd just like to see the surge hold on to possession of the ball, get into their rotations a little bit more, create a bit of pressure with possession. I think uh, the Rapids are doing it really well at the moment when they get the ball, rotating nicely. The moment when the surge intercept the ball, take it over, they're almost too direct at the moment. A long ball too. Now chance opportunity. and that's really good from the Waikato side. Forcing Howard out. They'll get play back in the way. And look here, they will be patient. Need to go down this left side. Good skill sets. Shown again by Max Eriksson. And the foul goes his way. It's a set piece opportunity. Something they do a lot of work on. Yeah, it's a big training court thing that a lot of teams work on. Just trying to find a way that you can almost, as a defending side, you have to block off the shot because these players can hit the ball very hard. But also you need to watch the back post because a tap and goal in this situation is almost what you're aiming for. And you can just see Maxwell Eriksson across there on that back post as well. So they do have options available to them. Expect something here. Expect the unexpected. Comes across, the shot comes in and just wide and just over the top. They pulled the trigger for some distance. And that is a really good example of the creativity and innovation that you can bring to futsal at set piece. And if you are a youngster watching this and you want to score goals in futsal, just hang out at the back post. You see the ball probably flash across that back post a couple of times every game. Now another shot, oh, just wide too from Ericsson. Really good left foot shot. Didn't have a lot to work with. Well, not only that, Mark, it was also flash across the back post. So if someone was arriving there, easy tapping. Just out of sorts at the moment. Plenty side, just struggling at times. They'll come away with an opportunity. Kawana looks to pass it through. Good chance, just a little bit behind him. Howard can't deal with it. Kato find a way of clearing it, but just demonstrating how lethal the plenty can be in that transition phase. So we talked about timeouts earlier. I think this is a good example of a time here where the surge should think about calling a timeout just to break up the way that the Rapids are playing at the moment. I think if they can go into the break one down, it's still anyone's game in that second half. Game by Howard at the back. Chance here. Oh, superb skills. That is brilliant from Ethan Martin, their captain. That goes down and a heavy challenge. 
And that is the fourth foul for Bay of Plenty. So they've got one more. They're going to be careful. And, of course, they'll now forces them really not to be able to play any sort of press. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the psychological thing about five fouls that's actually the hardest thing because it changes the way you defend. You have to think in the back of your mind, I can't give away a foul here. And, and, and sometimes in futsal, you have to give away the foul. Uh, so that when you're on that fifth foul, it changes the way you defend, which allows scoring opportunities. So just for anybody that's just joined us, five fouls per team, per half. It goes back to zero in the second half. But after that, if you commit a foul, you have team gets an automatic penalty shot from 10 metres. Not the 6 metre mark, but the 10 metres. Now, chance here. They look to go get creative again. Another shot. Tries to turn. Lovely little 1, 2, 3. Good play again from Casey Sharplin. Their captain just controlling things at the moment. And also Tyler Erickson. Coming now. We've got Caden Rogers. this phase here where the surge are being put under a bit of pressure defending this is where they tie it you can't make you don't want to be making oh chance little back heel close moment of brilliance another shot chance oh it's like a pinball machine at the moment and somehow the Bay of Plenty have found a way to get themselves out now can they turn defense to offense no picked up too easily it's Sharplin who looks to go down this left side Ramos gets back the captain of this Bay of Plenty side, Kawana now. Lovely little through ball. Does he pull the trigger? No, it's manhandled instead. Now the shot comes. Well, wonderful passage of futsal from both teams. Catch your breath there, Mark. That's a great futsal there. Defence turning into attack. And then the scramble from the Rapids. Too, just how high heart, high, how high their heart rates are, and just how warm it is too. When you are on the court, so Vava coming back on, Olsen back on, so looking to bring just a little bit more physicality. Aaron Carter on. Happy to be patient, happy to build. So, Jonathan Tobias, acting in that fix-it role. And we'll just play it out from the back. Aiden robs them under just a little bit of pressure because, pressure because of the high defence from the Bay of Plenty surge. I think they look better when they press on defence to the surge. I like to see them just bring that in a little bit more, rotate their subs a little bit more so that they have the energy to do that. It is, you know, well, you sort of feel, don't you, that it's very much the Rapids who like to retain possession, they like to string passes, they like to play that little short ball. So you've got to shut that room, you've got to shut that time down. I think as well when, you, when you're almost chasing the game, I know it's only 1-0 at the moment, but the momentum shift that can happen when it's a 2-0 lead versus that 1-0 lead, or I think this is the time to be going for it. So Aiden Robson. Now Vava, oh, just loses control. It's better than that. The man from Zimbabwe. That's the other thing too. It's great, isn't it? Having all these different countries now over here living. Uh, players bringing a different influence. We've got Vava from Zimbabwe. We've had a number of players from Brazil, Spain, uh, Japan. Uh, strong Asian influence. Yeah, there's plenty of Brazilians down in Queenstown. I'm sure we'll see featured in future tournaments again. Vieira Gull, there's two Vieira Gull brothers, and both are outstanding, surprised they haven't been injected earlier, they are starting to come in, have their influence shot comes, open opportunity, but no, I just thought there that Aiden Robson might have taken his chance, but decided not to go for it for Waikato, but still really good defence, another long ball, sort of do feel too when the long ball comes, it's almost, you've got to be careful that you're not just waving the white flag and it looks like a pass of desperation because the defence is so good. The other thing as well, I think the way the surge are playing at the moment, when they hit that long to Olsen, no one's close enough to him to receive the ball again. He's kind of all on his own up there. Like when he gets the ball in this position here, that player needs to be closer so that they're able to receive that pass and also pulls the defence away. 
Wide touch up with the left foot shot now. Open up on the other side. He's that first time. Goes himself. And I mean, it's easier said than done sitting up here. And Baba now gets to go one on one. He draws the foul. So good play. Worked that nicely. So. Jonathan McMillan in the number two shirt for the Waikato Rapids. See the guilty player there. So they now thread the needle. Olsen, can he turn? Can he go? Lovely little layoff. Now he's back in the middle. Can they find the pass? He turns. He's got the big left foot. Now the shot does come just over the top. But that is better enterprise. That is good play. Ryan McLeod this time on the end of it. Lovely little pass. Well, well actually it was almost a pass that came off the toe of Aidan Robson in terms of trying to clear it but much better Just poor defensive shape there from the Rapids too many of their players off to one side which allowed that to open up for the surge yeah if you're not going to play that press you've got to play a zone type defense don't you? you've got to hold the shape I hear a lot of players when they're defending if a player moves around they just bounce their player around so the player actually when you're defending, you're not actually keeping the same player you're marking. You're just marking that space. If another player moves into it, you bounce it on. But that requires a lot of communication, which I guess, you know, when teams are new, it's a bit harder to, to get that working. So Kalani, Viragal, you take the corner. What can they do here? Roy McLeod, Vava, and Olsen. Players on court. Can't capitalise. Will be the goalkeeper Nat Camplin who will get play back underway. Just a minute remaining in this first half. It's been a very quick first half as well. Such has been quality of possession from both sides. Now, good play here again coming from Tobias with the shot and a superb goal. That is brilliant. This time it is from Thomas McMillan who just drills it into the top right corner. Have a look at this. Lovely opportunity. One touch. Bang! Just from nowhere. The Midas touch, a moment of brilliance. Individuals will win your game, squads will win your championship. And that was a combination of both. There's too much space there from the surge to get close to that player, especially in those areas. I mean, no mistake of it, top ends. Yeah, left foot too, lovely. So now, the day of cleaning. Surge, you've got all the work to do, Vava. Looking to find Olsen, Olsen from the backfield of Vava, but nicely picked up and read by Casey Sharplin. You haven't seen the timeouts, have we? No. Obviously both coaches happy with how things are going. Sharplin, and now a big long ball. No real intent on that, maybe the intended target was Erickson. Both sides a bit sloppy in the transition. Again, we're starting to lose its shape a little bit. Corner opportunity. Now, Brian McLeod, can they score from here? They've been doing it, haven't they, just before the breaks? Baba didn't get over the top of it. Which is that. Into. So yesterday they scored with about a second. Yeah, great goal. Remaining. Great goal just with just before the end of half time, and that, you know, just shifted that momentum again. They just couldn't capitalise in that first 10 minutes of that second half but they certainly looked a lot better on the score sheet at half time so Ericsson and Vava coming together across the far side I imagine both coaches will be getting themselves ready for their little half time spells bring it up Reese the needle turns just couldn't quite control it now opportunity here Ryan right, McLeod looks to try and bring it down. But, turnover. Again, managing to get out of trouble was Vieira Gull. And they look to try and go long for Olsen, but just too much weight on it. So 22 seconds remain. It is Kato Rapids leading by two goals to nil. Fascinating bronze medal match in the fourth football Super League. Good defence from Elliot Cooper. yesterday with two seconds to go before the half but Olsen running the decoy can't get it through chance now though does come across 
Somebody just needs to pull that trigger. Seven seconds remains. Counting down, the shot will come. Does the shot come? Vava can't turn. He has a shot now, but it's wide. And as we go into half time, it is the Waikato Rapids leading the Bay of Plenty surge by two goals to nil. Mark Matsis, sum up that first half. What did you like, firstly, about the Waikato Rapids? They've moved the ball well, they've held on to it well and created opportunities and taken their chances as well. There hasn't been many chances, but the Rapids have taken them. I want to see the surge move more. Is that the message at halftime? I think so. They, they got them past the move. Even just in that last little segment of play there, they were pretty much all just standing there. They need to be rotating around, dragging players away from that space so they can get the shooting opportunities in. Well, we'll get a pretty good idea of what has been said based on what we see in the first couple of minutes and the way both teams set themselves up. So if they get that movement, that's important for the surge. I like to see them come out and press high for the first couple of minutes and rotate around. Just that one goal will change things here for them. Yeah, good defence there from Ramos, the captain of Bay of Plenty. So Bay of Plenty are playing in the blue and the black, the Waikato Rabbits in the white and the red. Now, yeah, opportunity again. Time. Really good shot from nowhere too. But Nate Camplin answers the questions asked of him. Ramos looks to try and bring it up this left side. Looking for his receiver in Keenan Howard, but just too much weight on it. Goalkeeper for the Waikato uh, Rapids is JP Page. It's actually a change here. It's Patrick Steele. Oh, have they? Okay, so they've made the change. Court. Patrick Steele. I think the surge have made a change as well in goal. So they would have brought Fazil Akil on if, in fact, they have made that change. We'll just confirm that for you. Yes, it does. It is indeed. So it is Fazil Akil has come on for Nate Campbell for the Bay of Plenty. Ethan Martin, boy, he's had a big workload, the captain for Waikato. Strong football player, Ethan Martin, and a great performance on the New Zealand side. It's a young team, but they managed to get the win over the Solomon Islands, which is the first time we've done that. Yeah, the OFC Championship, I did watch highlights of that game. Is that about 7 2 or 6 2? Yeah, it blew out in the end. Yeah, chance now, opportunity. They takes it to. We talked about Casey Sharplin, the influence that he's had, the workload that he's had. He's their captain. And in fact, their captain, Ethan Martin, but what a playmaker. Casey Sharplin very much have beat this offense around him. He has been the playmaker and great reward for a great player. Yeah, classy finish there, just one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, rolled it round and down the shooting lane. Not what the surge would have wanted at the start of the second half. Uh, it starts to get a bit psychological once you get to a certain mark, doesn't it? It's all very well saying believe, but you won't want to get beyond three goals. They really need to be the next team to score, and they need to score quickly. They just somehow shift the momentum. Get up, play that press type defense. Just don't allow the Rapids here a chance to play. Oh, don't often see the head. That would have been certainly. Highlights reel for Tyler Erickson and the number 18 shirt for the Waikato Rapids. I'd also like to see a bit of energy coming from the surge in terms of their bench. The way they respond to a challenge or something like that. It just lifts the team out on the court. It's quiet at the moment. And I think that, that change of momentum has got to come from something like that. Sometimes that just comes to a moment of individual brilliance. And I wonder whether Ramos is that guy. That's lovely little ball through. Just lift the chance. Uh, desperate defence. And I've got a feeling it's that man again, Sharplin. And again, it's that better movement from the surge. Just creating that space and making those passing channels work for them. Now they do look to try and put it in. Too slow. Got to go. Good press defence. Putting Captain Kawana under pressure. And that forces a little bit of desperation from Aaron Carter. It's been the difference of the two teams as well. In that situation there, the surge went for the shot, but definitely wasn't on. Instead of just cycling that ball around and rotating around to try and find that open shooting lane. Get a play from both Trini. We'll try and put a few more phases together, a few more passes. Ethan Martin. It's 
to better press as well. Yeah, Great chance pitch. now, opportunity, oh brilliant, superb individual skills, that is a wonderful moment. Aaron Carter, his sixth goal of the tournament, we talked about just a little moment of individual magic and brilliance, maybe shifting the momentum, we saw it, and just how much time did he have to score that goal, that is superb. And suddenly it's 3-1. And again, that came from the press. We asked for that. We wanted to see the surge come out and press high. They did force the error and get the goal back. This is it, getting up. Yeah. That's what they needed. Really good play from Carter. through that Razine Golden Boot, it's Eduardo Exposito Espinosa, the captain of East Coast Bays, your seven goals. And we've got Andrew Olsen and Crit Twig sitting on six, and now Carter moves to six with that goal. Maxwell Eriksson sits on five. Yeah, down through the likes of Oban Gorkin for East Coast Bays, Sean Morgan, what a player he is, and Casey Sharplin, who has added another goal to his tally, so Sharplin will move to five. And we do acknowledge Razine, thank you for their support are in the market and you're looking for paint please go with the brand that supports the sport that you love hopefully if you're in the car for a market and a particular model of Ford is one of the options please go with that chance here now Aaron Carter oh, a lot more urgency now chance here this is much better and now off the volley can't quite do it though starting to see that urgency creeping in Matt as you mentioned, from this Bay of Plenty team. More talking, more energy. More movement. That's really what it is. It's, I think they're a bit stagnant towards the close of that first half. Just They're forcing a few more errors out of this rapid side through that movement. Of course, I've picked off now. Opportunity to make it. And he does score! And you talk about transition play, you talk about taking your moments. Tristan Kawana, every time he is on, he brings some X factor, a big star of the future. And if you are going to play in that fix it role, you can't afford to be going one on one. You've got to be accurate. And suddenly it is 3 2, and there is that momentum shift. It's like they went that third goal ahead did the Rapids and then they've just fallen asleep. Just letting the surge back into this. Momentum really shifted now. And again, they now bring the changes. So Barbar will come back on. All by a plenty, as will Michael Landig. Just an absolute rock and that fix it roll at the back it works nicely down that right flank with Baba and they rotate that fix it roll nicely the two of them Landig not afraid to get forward as well now for the first time in this game it's the Waikato Rapids that have been asked a few questions I'm really interested to see with this with Olsen on now whether or not he'll have a better success than he did in the first half just with that momentum change oh, that was Better from Baba. Normally, that one two with Olsen, you see it taking the long shot that time. He decided to look and hunt for Roy McLeod. And Carter, and then number seven. Really, really good goal that. It's just having that time though, that's what makes the great players that ability to just slow time down, do what you need to do to go one on one round the keeper. Ryan McLeod to Baba. Baba trying to get himself out. Long ball. Shot there for Olsen. We keep talking about futsal. Expect the unexpected. It's been an absolute metaphor for that statement in the second half. Well, they were down and out on the surge, but found a way to get back into this and st plenty of time. Stop clock, almost 16 minutes to go. It's wasted though from Barber. 
Just lazy futsal. Forcing the turnover, they do force the turnover. Oh, brought down and a big tackle. We're going to see a yellow card come out here. I think we are. It's only yellow, but it's a foul and will go against Maxwell Erickson. Probably had no real choice there. I actually am amazed at how gracious everybody is, seeing some of the level of physicality and contact at times. Everybody just seems to get up and get on with it. Seems to be a lot of niggle that overflows. Can happen though. Mm. Sure, there'll be some passion in the finals this afternoon. A chance here for Vava, set piece here to try and make it to three all. Takes the big shot and wasted opportunity. He's a little bit ambitious. Looking for that top left hand corner. I think, again, it's, that's the almost the age of the side, I think. In the pre-match, Ramos said, you know, "Younger than 21." I think what three players yeah. under 21. And those types of decisions there, to me, are, are kind of what's separating them at the moment. That's just that lack of experience at key times, and you're just going to have that player that can come on with that calm head and go, "No." It's an interesting one, isn't it? Just trying to get that balance between experience and what I call youthful exuberance. You've got to have a combination. You've got to know how to balance your sides. So ultimately look for Chris Hyde in that pivot role. It is Waikato through Tyler Erickson. Nice and distributed by Martin. And it's going to just hang on to the ball. That's clearly the message that's come out. But another wayward pass. And they change position. Almost through an unforced error. Could have a pretty surge team. Energy shifted for the Rapids. You see the way that they're walking around on the court at the moment. They're just looking for something a little bit more from them as well. Yeah, well, it seems to have got up sharp and stuff. Had some pretty big shifts. Now the shot comes from Vava. Again, Vava just decided to take it on his own. And frustrate the coaches. I'm not sure that that's the sort of set piece they work on. Because when it's the format of futsal as well as we have these tournament weekends. So we are into quite deep in the tournament now. We've had quite a few games. The body's a bit, a bit sore. We still so haven't seen Kareem Osman onto the court yet. Our okay, groin injury is a nasty one, isn't it? Particularly for a sport like this. Certain injuries can probably get away with groin. Yeah, being sort of pulled left and right all the time. A niggly, one to, a niggly one to get right as well. Oh, he is one of the older players in the squad as yeah. well for the Rapids. So. Lead by one goal. Now they look to go to Ericsson again. Lovely pass back and two. Chance here. Looking to try and thread the needle. Can't find it. Backing up in that pivot role is Ethan Martin, their captain. And he drops back under the flanks here, Martin. And put him to out of play by Ryan McLeod. It's just much better movement again there from the Rapids. We're seeing the way that they're rotating around, trying to find those opening that but also patience. So, Mark Matsis alongside of me, bringing you all the expert comments, the voice of what's all in this country, lovely to have you here. We're taking out some of the guesswork for people maybe not that familiar with it. It's its own sport in its own right, smaller ball, heavier ball. Now chance here, oh, pulls the trigger, great shot, great effort. That's what we like television moment right there. I've got a feeling they had been a little bit closer that the save would have been made by Fazil Akil, who has been the preferred goalkeeper throughout much of this tournament. That's good defence there from the surge, just forcing them back. Yep, and now chance. Landig. Looking for Vava, just a little bit too much weight on the pass. Had it been a little bit more controlled, there was an opportunity to break clear. Come wide. 
Cross court. And now opportunity does it. Oh, Ericsson with the big shot. Superb save. I cannot tell you how much courage you have to have in goal because that was drilled and this is a really heavy ball. Have a look at this. Bang! Just gets both hands up. Doesn't flinch. So you want to put that man in the trenches. I have seen actually a number of goals being scored from goalkeepers from one end to the next and they're allowed to do that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the surgery did talk about it in the pre-match run going to fifth man. You know they call the flying keeper. Well, they can pull their goalkeeper, put a court player on who will be in a different coloured shirt. And he basically won't be in goal while they're in possession. The danger is if you lose possession, you open yourself up. So it's high risk, high reward. Of course, you still got to worry about that two touch as well. So you see that keeper come across the halfway line. Can we just explain that rule to us. Right? We'll just get a, a, a stoppage in front. Can you explain the two touch rule just for people watching football, maybe for the first time? Oh, <laughs> the creativity. That's what I love about this game. Ryan McLeod, you're sitting there. He tries this little back flick. Okay, it didn't work, but it could have. And that's what the sport encourages is that little bit of individual innovation. It's not about being showy. Yeah, moments. As we now see Waikato having a big shot, really good effort too. And that was good from Henry Thompson. A really good left foot shot here, just turns Barber inside. Beats another one. Dropping back was Landig. And then just looks to thread the needle, kept it nice and low. Good piece of keeping the game from Fazila Kiel. So the two touch, once a keeper has touched the ball once, the other team has to take a deflection or take a touch before the keeper can touch in their own half again. Sure. If they step over halfway, they can touch it again. But they've also only got four seconds to hold on to the ball in their own half, so they need to push forward quickly. So if you see a keeper run out with the ball, they actually need to get over the halfway line in four seconds. A chance here now. Scrambling defence, Ramos gets back, but onto the left foot. Again, it's through the creative genius of Casey Sharplin. He has been everywhere, Sharpland's still involved. He's had a big, big shift. So much at the moment, you'd say he's the game's MVP, just based on his work rate alone. Ethan Martin, the captain now. Asking more, Ericsson goes back to Martin. Martin goes back across to Sharpland. Good formation, look at that perfect diamond formation at the moment. The two flanks, you've got that fix it at the back and the pivot at the front. Working nicely now, trying to thread the needle. Ericsson with the shot. Just wide again, lovely build up. That's really good futsal from Waikato. That is what the coaches will be wanting. That's what they lacked early on in the second half. It's patient and they're trying to find it. They're not forcing anything. They're trying to find that shooting lane. It's also been, I think, better from both sides in the second half. Shot comes over the top. So Aaron Carter, a little bit more creativity on that corner. Eleven and a half minutes remain. It's still anybody's game at the moment. We've seen some real momentum shifts. And well, Ramos guilty then. Oh, bringing down. Gets a yellow card. It's a heavy, heavy piece of play on the real playmakers for the Waikato Rapids. Hate to say it, but some of the contact at times it has to be strategic, doesn't it? It's, it's also a hard court as well when you fall. It's you take a bit of a knock and it, you really do feel it. So, 
Number nine, Henry Thompson, the player that is leaving the court. So the replacement will come. I know I'm just amazed at how these players throw themselves around, particularly in defense, how the keepers throw themselves around, the sliding they take. It's a good thing that they've got a sweat up because at least they don't grip the floor. They need to use their sweat as almost a grease. Can see the game stopped and the towels will come out. Not dissimilar to basketball. Opportunity. This is it. Oh, good chance here. Another big long shot. Just good creative play from that set piece from distance. Now they have plenty do. They look to go long. Chance here. And the intended receiver was Tristan Kawana. He's already scored a brilliant individual goal. Can close it to one. Some of those shots that have just been coming in in this half are just almost tired shots. And your decision making goes a little down and you kind of look up and there's a bit of space there to get a shot away. You just bang it in in hope. That's where the Rapids need to go back to their basics, set up their formation and rotate. That's the steal of the goalkeeper for the Rapids. Good press defense coming from. Bay of Plenty, they're a better side, Bay of Plenty, when they get up and get in the face of the Rapids team with that press deep. Now, this is good play, though. You need to use that pivot in the middle a lot more. Waikato. This is the four, though, for the surge. They're going to have to get that breakthrough. They just look a bit more dangerous. Olsen's just struggled to find a bit of room to shoot in this game today. But the other player that I would like to see more of is Mario Ramos, their captain, just getting involved a little bit more higher up at times. With a lot of work in the background, Ramos, but he's such a creative player. And I just, just wonder how long they'll go for before they shift to that fifth man. Maybe one of the Yerkes and brothers that'll take that role. Chance forward. here, now opportunity, good play. Just a slight breakdown in communication, but good enterprise. Shown by I have plenty. Still go. By Cato Rapids, who lead by one goal. Ten minutes remain. I'll get you to explain what happens if we're tied up at full time. It's a question sometimes I don't even know how to answer, but I believe today we are going to extra time. And then after that it will be penalties. Did have a thing in the past where you almost lost a player every few minutes until a goal was scored. Chance clear. Had some exciting games. Looking like they'll go to extra time, and that momentum shift is something that's quite amazing in futsal. Yeah, I was saying. Um, good defensive header coming from Jonathan Tobias. He's back on court. And Tobias again, just shutting down the very talented Keenan Howard in that 14 shirt for the Bay of Plenty. And good press defense here, forcing the white cut out rapids. Inside your own half and through that turning position over now. Chance comes. Good play there. Oh, wow. That would have been a stunning piece of play again by Mario Ramos. We talked about him getting more involved here. Look at this. Great skills. Lovely cross. And almost on the end of it was Keenan Howard. He had to go to the back post there. He needed to make that run to the back post earlier. And that's an easy tap in. We sit up here in our armchairs. And well, it's very easy to play <laughs> futsal from up here, Mark. I'll yeah, tell you that. The old the armchair critics. No, it looked really good. Ramos has said he needs to be involved more. Now it is Aiden Robson looking to take control. I'm sure there would be some coaches agreeing with me on the back post, though. I'm oh, pretty sure most of them. <laughs> Got to get there. Easy tapping every time. Yeah. Nine minutes, just the one goal in it. So Tyler Erickson back on. Pull the trigger from anywhere, and there's an example of it. Yeah, the goalkeeper looks to try and go. 
Olsen there. Lovely little layoff from Olsen. What Olsen does do, he tends to draw defenders in. Mm. And therefore that gives you an opportunity to exploit the space out wide. Just not sure though that they have plenty of managed to do it. Now chance. Pull the shot here. It's another shot here. Superb. Great piece of keeping. Good futsal all around. Really good shot coming from Aaron Carter. Great piece of goalkeeping from Patrick Steele. Lovely little piece of time here from Carter. Look at that. Beats one. Great piece of keeping. I think with Olsen as well, he just hasn't been able to bring the ball under and look to turn. Which that, If he can do that, it brings in two more players. You'll see with some of the really good pivots, your Carlos Hermans, your Sean McKinties, that they hold on to the ball and draw two in. Yeah, because if you've got your back turned to a defender, it means that another defender has to come in to really try and take that ball. And you're right, so suddenly, yeah, you draw the two in. But a really good opportunity from that corner there for the Bay of Pliny. Couldn't quite capitalise. Play back underway, eight and a half minutes remaining. Finals day of the full Futsal Super League. Hope you are enjoying the coverage here on Sky. Getting back and getting rid of the danger is Makaha Vieira Gull, one of two Vieira Gull brothers. Kalani the other, who will wear the number five. And now there is the very talented Mario Ramos. Father Sergio Ramos, the coach. Got down the line, four pass. Chance going, great skills once again. From Aaron Carter, but transition play at both ends. Chance here to extend it by two. Couldn't do it. They will get the corner though. So Maxwell Eriksson, the player brought down, and I think they described that that was a legal challenge. Again, class there from Ethan Martin. Good challenge. Sends Eriksson through, and he can't finish. So they go back, and that Lyrickson again with another shot. This time Olsen gets in the way. That is a brick wall. Olsen putting the keeper. Keeper had no real choice there, so Patrick Steele just sending it long. Looking to just try and slow things down. Allow his Waikato Rapid side to just maintain their shape. And he hasn't been that effective today, has he, Olsen? They've managed him well. Yeah, I mean, there are two Futsal Whites on the court as well that have been looking after him. Sharplin and Martin. Oh, James Erickson, but picked off now, opportunity. Player out to his right, passes just a little bit light, but they'll come back, now Vava. He likes to shoot from distance, it's not the time though. And now, Vava does a good job, just getting himself between the ball and his opponent. And sees that ball run out. What's the official terminology for the goal kick? It's a goal clearance. Goal clearance, and it's a kick in, not a throw in. Now, chance here. Oh, good individual skills again from Ericsson, but now opportunity on the transition. They go through Kawana. Back through Aaron Carter. Now looks to try to switch play up through the middle. Lovely little piece of footwork here. Now, Kawana. Vava. Vava. Oh, a lovely little entry pass if we were to use a water polo terminology. The D. I think this is where here the Surge need to chase the game. You know, the, the Rapids just do this for the rest of the six and a bit minutes. And they'll win the game. I think they've got to force the issue now. They've got to get, in, get physical here. A few fouls away if they have to get up high. Press. Well, there's no foul trouble at the moment. I mean, that's the one thing you kind of take with you. Where are you in the part of the game, the game management of understanding the fouls? One foul each, six minutes to go. be unlikely to see five fouls in this half. Turn off, beautifully picked off again. Chance here now. Ericsson just passed a little bit behind him, but it was Casey Sharplin who was heavily involved now. The second of the Ericsson brothers, Tyler in possession. So Maxwell and Tyler both on court and looks to go across and somehow, somehow, oh, a little mistake, but they found a way. Now, Kawana Kumbava. No, 
Oh, transition scrappy from both teams. Needed support there, did Ericsson. By himself. Trying to just flick that one over. Now, great here from Martin. Comes across and scores! Individual brilliance again from Ethan Martin. And how much damage has that done psychologically to this Bay of Plenty team? Just comes down beautifully, Martin. Just finds that angle, just struck that. Superb. I'll tell you what, Fasil Hakil not happy in goal, but sometimes you've just got to sit back and admire the striker. And the timeout called now from the surge, which will, I imagine will be setting up the fifth man. They've got to go for it now, two goals behind. Miss Tuming will be one of the Ericsson brothers. So I'll get you to just take people, people that may have just tuned in now, just take everybody through the whole fifth man scenario, what it means, what are some of the dangers. Yeah, so basically what's going to happen is they're going to change their goalkeeper to a more of an outfield player. Most of the time they are pretty handy at saving the ball. But they're going to push over halfway. And you'll see the first time a keeper do a couple of sprints. They do some big sprinting back and forward. And then what you do is you try and hold on to the ball for as long as you possibly can to find an opening because they've got an extra man up top. So we'll play within one half. They'll defend it almost like a zonal defence. There's a couple of different setups you can do and we'll talk through that for the Rapids when they set up here. But it does create more shooting opportunities. Great to see family and friends in attendance. So that time out. And so what? Yeah, I think we've seen the white colour jersey. So yes, it's Ramos. Ramos. So that he is now going to act as the goalkeeper. He's hoping that he won't have to because they'll retain possession. You'll see the. You'll see. Fazil Akil come back once they lose possession, but you've got to have confidence. An opportunity here now for Waikato to get up and press high. So see the way here, the fast ball movement is the key to good fifth man. So if you get caught up like this, you've got to bring it back round. Two touches, just moving it, a lot of moving it. That there, too forced. Yeah. Forcing that issue too much. So Ramos, he'll take control. This is good play. Ramos again. Vava. He doesn't want to shoot from distance either because Kuka can pick it off too easily. Vava, another shot from Vava, well blocked. Another shot from Ramos. Well obtained possession, good block. His body on the line with Jonathan Tobias in the number five shirt for Waikato. And well set up here to defend. You see Kareem Osman with the whiteboard. And that timeout, talking the players through. Well, that's better from the surge, that movement back and forth, trying to find that out and tire out that defence as they have to shuffle back and forward. So, uh, way would pass, and now you will see Ramos leave the court, and Fazir Akil come back on. So it'll be standard formation until they retain possession. So there's going to be a high press now, I think, from surge. It has to be. And the opportunity comes and the goal it is and that is the danger. That is the danger that comes with the flying keeper and put themselves under pressure really from the transition play. Disappointing for Coach Ramos. Another poor pass. Opportunist goal. And what, we, what went wrong there was the surge didn't sit up. They didn't sit up well enough in their fifth man formation. You want to press as the team, so the Rapids will look to press to try and block them from doing that. And they just made that substitution too quickly, which didn't allow them to get into this setup here where they're able to pass the ball around. And the fifth man, Casey Sharpton again. The scores are getting very physical between both teams now. Pleading, pleading for a call. Is Aiden Robson for the Waikato. Incredibly gladiatorial on occasions. So 5 2, three goal buffer now. Time is starting to run out as well. So they'll have that clock pressure. In their best interest. Good flat, press defense coming from Bay of Plenty. 
another example of incredible athleticism from these players and what they're prepared to do. Nathan Robson there. You see the way that the Rapids are sitting high now, trying to force that issue so they can't come out in the fifth man. Oh, lovely ball, lovely ball. Now Ramos, can he go in? He draws two players and looking for Olsen on that far post. And it would have been one of those great goals, but just couldn't quite get his head on it. That is better. I'd like to see the surge relax a bit more on this fifth man. They're just forcing it, they're pushing it, they're playing too quickly. They just need to get into formation and slow down. It doesn't take long to score goals in football. So bring it back up, will be Ryan McLeod. Back to Fava, another poor pass. And keeper this time, Garcia. He was almost looking to exit to allow Ramos, the flying keeper, to come on. And in that process, they lost possession. He's well and truly off his line. Chance at the other end. Small one, but a chance. Got 3.51 remains. Bring you the women's final following this between Papakura and the Might of East Coast Bays. They've played each other on three occasions throughout the Super League tournament. And Papakura yet to win. They've had the draw and two losses. Contrasting styles and teams that are stacked full of futsal ferns. Ramos, lovely little through ball, can't find Olsen. Get it back to Farbar. Ramos goes up this left side, good plays. Olsen though, just off balance again. Ramos comes back in. The goal is open at this point. Oh, nice, this is better. Chance. Olsen just wasn't there. Can he pull the trigger now? Has the shot, goes himself. And the corner. And I'll tell you what, Waikato Rapids absolutely up on the bench, thrilled with the defence, the desperation. They realise the danger. It's experience of Kareem Osman as well on the court for the Rapids. Number six, his first few minutes on this game. And they just want to try and shut it down here. Again, great footwork. Good to watch Aaron Carter. And Kato Rapids just hanging on here. This is when that fifth man can be very effective. They're doing enough, uh, the Rapids. It's just, I think they're creating space out of surge, but then when that space is shut down by the Rapids, they're forcing that shot through. I like to see them come out again in this situation here. They're just trying to force that shot in, saying, hey, it's not on now. I'll come back out and we'll rotate it round. So Mark Matsis bringing you the expert comments out to us about the day here on Sky Sport. We'll bring you the four foot to the Super League. So far up. Lovely from Olsen, good play here, that's good, that's great play. So, Ryan McLeod though, prison futsal player. Brian Fava, goes back to, to Ramos, to Olsen, Olsen with a shot! Oh, wow, 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 wow. So close. Patrick Steele got big there. This gets a big mid on that. He did just reflex too, wasn't it? And the other one does it again. So, big game now. Coming from Patrick Steele in goal and tries to score at the other end. Real desperation and urgency coming from Bay of Plenty. Just two minutes remain. They trail by three. Ramos. Vava. Vava again, Ramos, another long shot, and just goes wide. So, chance in their arm, Bay of Plenty, they've got nothing to lose now, though. Vava will get play back underway. Ramos out to his left. We've got Ryan McLeod. needs to be quicker. Just a few extra touches being taken at the moment. 
which is allowing the Rappers to smack in and find that defensive on space. Now looks to try and turn, taken down. Heavy tackle. And the very talented Kalani Vieiragal. Let's have a look here. Looks to pivot. And so, set piece opportunity. Can they do the unthinkable? Can they find three goals in the space of a minute and a half? I've seen it before, Mark. It can be done. I have no doubt about it. Got to hit him hard here. What you will notice is that the clock stops every time the ball goes out, so you can't really kill time through time wasting. Chance here. Do they look to just try and drill this, Vieira. Vava. And they will win the corner. Set up here defensive wise. They look for the big hook shot. They find the Ramos. Great con foot control from Ramos. Needs to bring it forward though. And picked off nicely. Don't know the Waikato Rapids. But still in possession. Keenan Howard gets to play. Back underway. Vava. To Ramos. Now Howard. And he looks to get it in. Far post. And it was open to. Searching for Kalani Vieira Gal. One minute ten. Have you seen three scored in a minute ten? I've seen some outrageous things in futsal. And I tell you what, one goal when you've got fifth man on, it can really change momentum. But just like just one goal against you in fifth man, you can take the wind out of you. So. Five up, minute remaining. Bronze medal at the moment going the way of the Waikato Rapids. back up through Keenan Howard. Howard with the shot. Another shot. No, this time goes out to Vieira Gull. Another corner, another set piece opportunity. I think that's the thing as well. The experience kind of needed in these situations for the surge. I mean, this is going to be great for them in the future. But they're just taking those shots with the fifth man on and they should be looking for a bigger opening. So Ramos. Oh, it looks the three the needed. Can't find it now. Chance at the other end to score. It goes wide. And it would have well and truly wrapped it all up. So, 38 seconds remain. Hope you are enjoying coverage here from the Bruce Pullman Arena. With you throughout the afternoon, women's final to come, followed by the men's final. And the men's final should be a beauty. Battle of the Bridge. East Coast Bay is up against the might of Auckland City. Ramos. Oh, looks to for that cross ball to Vava. Vava in that fix it roll. And a lot of the play through him. Oh, great skills. But he's it over the top by Ollie Harris. I've seen a lot of Ollie Harris in this game. Just the nine seconds now remaining. We'll hear from both captains at the end of this. Ethan Martin and Mario Ramos. Now, just for five seconds. I think the Sergio will be happy with the performance. And there it is, it's all over. And it is the Waikato Rapids. To take out third place in the Ford Futsal Super League, beating the Bay of Plenty Surge by five goals to two in really what probably can be described as a pretty dominant display. And congratulations to their coach, Wesley Hendricks. But Futsal, well, it's in a better place for these two teams because they're both full of youthful exuberance. The future is bright. Also, just want to acknowledge and recognise the referees, Ben Norman, Sean Lau, and Jake Brunton for their performance. We will go courtside and get some thoughts from the two captains but Mark Mattis sum that up for us yeah I think you, you hit the nail on the head there it was a dominant performance by the Rapids there was that phase in the second half where the surge got back into it they got back into their work went back to the basics of futsal and easily came away with the win in the end with uh, Waikato Rapids uh, captain Ethan Martin Ethan uh, of course, you guys would have been like to be playing in that first and second uh, final this afternoon, but good to, to finish the tournament with a win. Yeah, I think after yesterday's performances, we were pretty, 
pretty gutted not to be in the final after beating Auckland. But yeah, knew that we were up for another challenge today, and Bopper a bit of a bit of a title contender as well. So we thought they're going to come out and press us. And I think first half it was a little bit scrappy, uh, lots of pressure, but I think we dealt with it well, found the target, and managed to score a couple goals. Not as many as the last couple times we played them, but yeah, really good way to end the series. It was 3-2 uh, for a lot of that second half. I think you scored the goal to take it out to 4-2. They called a, a timeout. What was sort of said in that timeout from, from you and your coach to, I guess, see you through to the end? Yeah, I think we knew they were going to go for fifth man. So, yeah, they practiced that quite a bit, and it's always a threat. In our first game, they scored three or four against us in a few minutes, so we knew that the game definitely wasn't over, and I think the boys pushed really hard, and we used all of our subs and managed to come away with pretty happy with that. And just finally, uh, that last goal there, a little bit of contention between yourself and Casey. Who's taking credit for it? Oh, Casey took credit for it, but I think they gave it to me, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> we well, the same anyway, so whoever takes it, it's all good. Yeah. Congrats again, my friend, and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Appreciate it. Well, down here now with the uh, Bay of Plenty Surge, uh, Captain Mario Ramos, and uh, a disappointing end for you guys to, to finish up the tournament. Yeah, pretty frustrating result. Um, we we'll are playing amazing for two. Um, but we are a pretty young squad, so just building up for future years. Um, as all the stuff against the Rapids as well. Great side. Um, we're pretty close at one point, 3 2. Try to use fifth man, got to see the two goals. Um, you can tell they've been working on defending fifth man. Um, yeah, the first game I think we scored four goals in fifth man, and this game we couldn't, couldn't break it down. But yeah, pretty frustrating, but proud of the boys. Pretty good results against um, one of the best teams around. And we are a young squad, like I said, so. Proud of, yeah, proud of the team. It's been a uh, obviously a gruelling last eight days, a lot of games in a short space of time. You've, you've finished up in fourth place, but what has the team learnt, do you think, over the last eight days? Oh, heaps. Like like I said, the boys are super young. Like We've got 15-year-olds in the squad. So just learning and playing against one of the top players in New Zealand. Like we played against some Futsalwak players um, in the Super League. So for the boys, like just learning how they play and playing against them, and it's amazing, yeah. So it's that opportunity to play against good players and um, our coach as well, um, Mario Senior, <laughs> my dad, um, yeah, taught us heaps throughout the trainings. And um, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty proud of the boys, yeah. Commiserations, teammate. Thanks for your time.